can joint space narrowing be visualized on ultrasound? The answer is yes. Here's an example of a normal joint space versus one with joint space narrowing. There normally is a space present between the ends of the bones where they articulate to form a joint. These ends are covered by articular cartilage. When arthritis is present, the space between the ends of the bones narrows or disappears as the condition progresses. This causes there to be bone-on-bone -bone opposition within the joint. It can be very painful for the patient when the bones rub together. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of a normal AC joint in the shoulder compared to one with joint space narrowing. Other findings present with degenerative joint disease are cartilage loss, bony proliferation, or inflammation of the synovial lining. You'll see examples of that throughout this whole video. I also have some examples of secondary signs associated with joint space narrowing. Like in this example of the hip joint, um, the joint space narrowing might be not as obvious as the last image, but what you can see is extrusion of the hyperechoic labrum, which is a secondary sign when the space is narrow, it pushes the labrum out of the joint. This image is a side-by-side -side comparison of the hip joint with a normal space versus one with joint space narrowing. In this video, I'm showing many examples of common joints affected by OA. This will include the shoulder joint, the hip joint, the knee joint, um, and a few joints in the fingers and toes. Here's another example of a secondary sign, but this time it's in the knee and it's regarding the labrum. So in this case, when the joint space was narrow from arthritis, there was extrusion of the labrum outside the knee joint. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a normal knee joint versus one with joint space narrowing. The physician who interprets the imaging studies will grade the severity of the joint disease. Joint space narrowing will definitely be seen when moderate or severe arthritis is present, but it may begin in earlier phases. Here's an example of inflammation of the synovial lining with hyperemia. Um, use power Doppler to detect this finding. This is located in the first MTP joint of the big toe. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a normal first MTP joint in the big toe versus one with joint space narrowing. Here's an example of a more severe case of joint space narrowing. This is a little bit further proximal in the foot at the second TMT joint. You can see the normal space on the top versus one with joint space narrowing on the bottom. In the next example, we're gonna move to the hand. In this case, this is the first carpometacarpal joint or also known as the basilar joint. The top example of a one of a normal joint space and on the bottom is one with joint space narrowing. The next example is further distal in the fingers. This is at the DIP joint. And now you'll see the side-by-side -side comparison of the normal joint space on top versus the joint space narrowing of the DIP joint on the bottom. When discussing the appearance of bony abnormalities on ultrasound, it's important to know that only the surface of the bone, called the cortex, can be visualized on ultrasound. Pathologies involving the bone can only be seen if the abnormality is present on the surface of the bone that can be visualized on ultrasound. You cannot rule out the presence of bony pathologies that are located in parts of the bone that cannot be visualized on ultrasound. Hope that helps.